Chicago. Expert insight now uh, on the APEC in the context of the global economy, William Lee, uh, Chief Economist, Milken Institute. Good to see you again. That's nice mm -hmm. The expectations are um, as high as I've ever seen it. Um, share with us a bit about the significance of this Xi's visit to San Francisco uh, and also this meeting with um, the Biden uh, is happening tomorrow. The APEC meetings bring a huge menu of economic opportunities, and uh, President Biden and uh, President Xi are going to be at the fulcrum of getting these opportunities enacted. We need to sort of reduce the tensions between the U.S. and China first call. Uh, we have to be able to allow trade to happen in a way that benefits all countries in the membership. And what the, 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 the discussions are going to fence on, center on are, are digital economy, uh, green and sustainable infrastructure projects, all of the things that China has uh, opportunities to offer to members of the APEC countries, and which the United States can also participate. So I think getting the rules of the road straight uh, between the two leaders is absolutely critical, because once we do that, China will present, I think, a new picture of Belt and Road, uh, a greener, smaller, uh, more sustainable projects, easier to finance. The United States will say technology is available to all if we ensure uh, domestic security. And, and getting these details down is going to be absolutely critical, and that's what the focus of the discussion is going to be. When, when you listed the priorities of, of what's happening the past couple of years between the U.S. and China, we've gone through a variety of um, both challenges and opportunities. What's going to be at the top of that list? I, I know you listed some of them, but I, I meant in greater detail as to what is the expectation that perhaps what President Biden may ultimately discuss or agree to? First requirement, I think, is that they're going to have to iron out a way of establishing and maintaining communications channels. Uh, President Xi and President Biden both have said it's important for us to be able to get in touch with each other. If the military requires a call, we accept each other's call. That's the first agreement. The second agreement would be about trade and the, the, the constituents of trade. Now, it's going to be hard to iron that out at this meeting, but I think an acknowledgement that that is a high priority topic that both of them are going to work toward is absolutely critical. Ch Ch uh, Treasury Secretary Yellen has already hinted that we need to promote economic opportunities between U.S. and China because that will spill over to all of the APEC members. Um, speaking of all the APEC members, um, if we had this discussion a couple of years ago, we'd be talking about the pandemic. That's clearly over. Um, the recovery is very much in place. We are now past the peak uh, inflation concern throughout most of the world. What are the apex countries worried about now? I think right now it's, it's a matter of having um, food security. Uh, in all this world of geopolitical tensions, uh, it's very hard to tell whether grain prices are going to be going up or going down, whether there be shortages. Uh, and I think the, the kind of security that the U.S. and China leaders can try to establish is to say, look, we recognize there's a lot of conflict around the world. We, as the two largest economies in the world, can do something about it. And we will all take an active role in trying to promote a more reduced level of geopolitical risk. That's the first requirement, to, to stabilize security. Uh, and once you stabilize security and job opportunities start to open up with trade, that's when you have income security and that's when you start to develop growth, both in China and in the rest of the world. You think about it from the Chinese perspective, uh, President Xi, obviously a very big moment for him uh, in San Francisco, back on U.S. soil. Um, he has a long list of things that he wants to sort of remediate, if you will, um, to solve. What's on the top of his list and what do you expect perhaps at the end of these discussions, what statement might be made? Great question. In fact, I think the most important meeting is not the meeting between President Xi and President Biden. It's the meeting with President Xi and all the CEOs at the dinner that'll, that'll take place. President Xi has to convince foreign companies to come back into China big time because Chinese, uh, you know, American companies and, and foreign companies represent about only about 3% of all Chinese companies in China. But it, the, these foreign companies account for uh, 40 percent of the trade that China does with the rest of the world. It accounts for 10 percent of the urban employment in China. So these foreign companies are absolutely critical, and that's going to be the highest priority for President Xi. Convince foreign companies China is open for business, and you're all welcome back. 
It's interesting. I, I, I just I haven't seen a summit or uh, an important meeting like this where the expectations are very high, quite frankly, on both sides. These CEOs that you're talking about, um, you speak with a lot of them, and they have they look at China as both opportunities, but there's also risk assessment as well. What do you think they're looking forward to perhaps hearing from President Xi? What are the key words? What are the actionable uh, issues that they're trying to resolve when they make these decisions on where to invest capital expenditures? The talk for the last six months to a year has been the question, is China still investable? Can we still put more money into China? And, and people have got, got a little freaked out over the fact that, well, you know, a lot of information is getting centralized. I really can't get my due diligence done in China because a lot of the companies I depend on to get the information to do due diligence, they're being shut down or being shut out of China. And, and some, some assurance on the part of President Xi that we will allow companies to come into China and investigate economic opportunities in a way that they do in every other country in the world. They do their, their due diligence, they find out the good opportunities, they find out the good companies, and they put the money there. That's the process that President Xi has to ensure that China will allow to happen in China as it does in the rest of the world. I think, look, the, the, the good news, the glass half full view of all this is that um, discussions are continuing. Um, we saw a number of U.S. executives travel to China um, in what appears to be successful discussions. We've seen U.S. officials travel there and vice versa. So definitely the tone of the last, say, three, four, five months is very different than it was earlier in the year. What do you think changed? And, and, and I, I got to think it's, it's a great positive. Well, both sides are doing a charm offensive. Both uh, the, the, the Chinese officials and the American officials saying, look, we know we've gone overboard. We went way nuts with our rhetoric. Let's tone things down. Let's come back to where we were, where we were benefiting each other. And I think that's the attitude that's now come back into the scene. And I hope it stays. Yeah, it's, uh, it's nice to hear uh, some talk of uh, common ground. Um, we could use a little bit more of that. Uh, William and Lee, good to see you. Thank you.